Okay, um, good evening or good afternoon or good morning um, to those who are going to be listening to the recording. Welcome to Community Connect and I'd like to just thank um, Steve Hagen for letting us use this space for educational conference and we now are approaching 100 um, people on the email list so if you're one of them listen to this and um, hopefully you'll get something out of it. Um, now tonight um, it's my pleasure to introduce um, Shambles Guru, um, aka Chris Smith, and AJ and others who might be contributing tonight in the use of tablets in bracket in iPad and Android. And the whole idea of this is just to um, focus on three or four categories on the the iPad as well as the Android as to how we can use as a classroom teacher and so that um, although I'm going to be going through some of the bits and pieces and devices um, I'm more of actual facilitating rather than actually presenting so um, before we start I would like to just go through in terms of what devices you use now there are actually only six of us now um, to see how what devices we're um, each of us are using in classroom or in a personal capacity so that way we get a bit of idea as to um, what's out there. So if you could just, um, for those who have never used the Blackboard Club before, if you have a look, there should be a just an A icon that you can just type in. Um, the key A fits. I believe that's how we read. And we're just um, talking about what um, things you use in terms of what, what device you use in your classroom or for your own benefits. And for those who are using the iPad or some kind of tablet devices, you can just type it into the chat box. Seven netbooks. <coughs> and yeah, AJ's got a new Samsung Galaxy Note. And someone wrote down using iPad in the classroom. There's mainly just iPads, which is with iPhone. Uh, welcome to JD1. So we just uh, just going through what devices you use um, for your own personal use or in your classroom. So if you'd like to just uh, grab a pencil or just a pick, or you can just put it into the chat box. <laughs> I just removed a few minutes about uh, key, key fit, I guess. And your microphone's on, I don't know if you're meant to be, if you'd like to say something or. I'm just going to mute her audio for the moment. Okay, so we've got um, several devices, um, four inch HTC Android phone, okay, high fridge, interesting. Okay, so basically what I want to go through today is, like I said before, there are four things and um, I wasn't actually preparing anything in terms of what um, apps I'm going to be sharing. So this is kind of a, um, everyone doesn't know what's actually coming up, which I think is a great um, session. Um, so first of all, I'd like to just go through things like um, explanation or instruction apps. Um, so these will be um, something you can probably use um, in your class using your iPad or maybe your Android. And the other one which I thought will be great for especially primary school 
is a game show like apps for classroom activities. And this one is uh, the classroom management or student management app. And not so much of a behavior management, but it's more of a record keeping. So if you might have um, the whole class, which you'd like to take um, the assessment, attendance, and so on and so forth. And to just wrap up, uh, we'll just have a look at some of the apps that we can sync with that cloud storage, so such as um, Dropbox, Box.com, Google, um, SkyDrive, SugarSync. There's so many out there. And the great thing with the, the cloud space is that you can just sync with any device. And so we'll look at some of these um, apps that we can use. So um, before I hand it over to um, Shambles, actually, we've got a question. And, okay, go ahead. Now, if you like to talk or if you like to um, put it into chat box. It seems to me that Keith it may have some issues um, getting used to some of the um, instructions. Maybe maybe this might be the first time in Blackboard Collaborate on the iPad or it's just not working for them properly. Uh, sure. So um, well, if you have any questions, uh, you can just put your hand up or you can start um, typing something in your chat box and we'll go through those ones. Um, so the, first of all, um, this in terms of explanation or instruction apps, uh, what I was thinking is something like um, explain everything. I don't know if you have many people have used explain everything. Um, now can I just have show of um, hands? Actually, there is a poll which, if you have a look on this part, and um, you should have a, a little smiley face and the person with the clock and the hand, and next to it is a tick box which says yes or no. So if you'd like to just um, say yes or no on the, the app called Explain Everything. Uh, so what about, okay, the question is, um, or if you have heard of it, or if you used it before, or if you're, any, if you're familiar with it, if you can just put down um, tick or cross. So we got two people that says either have heard of it or haven't used it before. Um, now, AJ said it is Android version, which I would like to have a look as well. Okay, so we've got three uh, crosses and two ticks. I'm not quite sure if the other people are having a bit of issues using it. Um, I'll think of shambles. Um, well, what I'd like to do is just um, show you what this um, app looks like. And hopefully it will cooperate on my iPad. Uh, Shambles, do you have um, explain everything on yours? Because my connection seems to be stuffing up. And oh, here we go. That's a bit better. I'm just going to do a, an app share, which hopefully everyone can see. Now just give me a smiley face or um, yes or no, if you can see the I, iPad screen. Uh, 
Okay, I'm getting some smile effects from some people, so it's great. And um, basically, what um, explain everything does is like a just imagine it as a the whiteboard that you can post anything. So if I click on just a start, uh, what you can see is just these hand tools which you can drag, or these ones are um, to, to bring a new page. And this one is just a drawing which you can just draw just like a normal whiteboard. And you can also uh, put some pictures, or oh, actually the, this one's arrowed. And you can also uh, add text, just like a normal whiteboard, unless except it's. And you can also, now this one is something that's it's quite an um, interesting feature because you can um, open up any web browsers or any new pictures, or any video. So if you have any pictures that you'd like to place, um, you can just go through. Um, and there's also a pointer, just like a laser pointer. And there's also different colors, which is wasn't available in the older version. And if you have a look down here, this is a great feature about explain everything because you can record what you're doing um, on the screen and you can share it with your students. Um, so for example, if you post something, um, could be any pictures that you might have and you can post it and you can just go through and annotate and, um, and then you can record what you're doing uh, as a process. And once you finish, you can export it and directly to YouTube or any other cloud storage. So for example, you might have a Dropbox or Evernote or Google Drive or there's a box. There's also PDF. So the, the export option is a great feature of Explain Everything. And you can also save, obviously, so you can uh, use it later on. Or you can save it as an image if you don't want to export it as a, as a video file. So I'm just not going to go through all of these because otherwise we could be here for the entire time. Um, so that's the one that I'd like to share in terms of explanation tools. I'm just going to bring it back to the room and I'm just going to hand it over to um, Shambles, which he will probably have another tool that he'd like to share. So I'm just going to hand it over and just if you have any questions, just post up. Okay, Shingo, thanks. Thanks. Right, let's me let me just uh, share my uh, applications. Why doesn't it want to share? Come on, you can do it. Try again. How interesting! Sharing applications isn't coming up, guys. Any suggestions? Um, application sharing. Oh, hang on. Oh, the, I think you're still sharing, Chingo. Maybe that's oh, why. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Here you go. There we go. Okay. Ah, yes. Here we go. Okay. Let's share. Let's see if I can share my uh, my iPad. Can you put a Y if you can see my iPad? Okay, there on your screen. You might have to move it around on your own screens. Uh, just put, yeah, great, Shingo, thanks, Jenny, thanks, and thanks, Catherine. Okay, Susie, brilliant. Okay, let's uh, have a have a look. So these are the the heading for this is presentation or sort of experimental tools, and screencasting is a good one. And uh, I must admit, I I like that one as well. Now. I'm aware that your screen will be going fuzzy when I do things quickly, but I will stop when I want to uh, show you something. So I've just browsed through an, a number of my windows, and I'm looking for screencasting. Where is screencasting? Here it is. Screencasting is down the bottom here. I'm curious. Can you see my pointer? 
on the screen moving around my. Uh, it's really quite interesting. Okay, so uh, if you send me a check, I'll tell you how you can put a pointer on your uh, on your iPad like this. Actually, I'm cheating. I'm actually mirroring my iPad onto my MacBook Pro, and so this pointer is from my MacBook Pro. But a good uh, a good uh, learning point there. I'm also doing something with my presentation that I see lots of people don't do, and I make my pointer big so you can see it. The number of classrooms I walk into, and there's a tiny sort of midget pointer running around the screen, and the kids can't find it. It's amazing. Make your pointers bigger, guys. Windows or whatever it is. Okay, so let me look in screencasting and explain everything is uh, is this icon here. And in the in the chat there's already the links to the uh, website and to their uh, um, and to their app, which costs you 2.99 US dollars. I don't know what it is in Australia. I'm going to mention uh, another one, um, but I'm not going to show it. I'm going to mention this one, Edu Creations. Actually, let me just see if I can drop that into chat. I think I've got edu. Explain everything. Edu creations. Yeah. Yes, I've got it here. Copy the URL. Move this out of the way. And drop it in here. And I'm going to mention edu creations for two reasons. One is actually three reasons. One is it's free, and free is good. The other thing is that if you signed up with Edu Creations uh, webinar um, screencasting uh, software, n not only can you do what we we just saw in uh, Explain Everything, but in Edu Creations you have an account and they're saved. Your, your 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 creations are saved to the cloud, and they like to say what you're doing is not a screencast, but you're making a lesson, an interactive lesson lesson. And I said you, I actually don't really mean you, I mean the kids are making them, right? You're not staying home at weekends working on these, you're getting the kids to do them, I hope. Um, but the other great thing about Edu Creations is on your Windows machine or your Apple machine, you can go to a web browser on their website. You can go to Edu Creations website and you can, it has a whiteboard there and you can do almost exactly the same as you can do on the iPad. So if your kids had laptops, so this is great for BYOD. If the kids had laptops, then uh, they could work on their laptops in a browser the same way as working in, a, in the app here. And they're all synced to the cloud. So whatever your creation is, you can find it on their website. And I think that's actually brilliant um, that you can do that. And I'd love to present it. And as Shingo said, we could spend the whole session on these, and I'm not going to. So I just wanted to raise attention. Oh. It does another thing. I said three things. Edu creation broadcasts over the network, uh, over Wi-Fi, over the internet, not over just your Wi-Fi, over the internet. It broadcasts to other machines. <laughs> and I'd love to try this now and show you, but I'm not going to. So with Edu creations, I could boot it up on my machine here and give you a special URL and you could go to that URL and you could see my screen. So if you haven't got a projector in your classroom, you can push it out to people's uh, phones, tablets, or laptops. But what I want to share here, <laughs> I've run through that really quickly. What I want to share here, I'm going to go into this one called uh, pre presenting. And uh, uh, I'm going to mention two here. There's all the regulars here, Keynote and Prezi. But I'm going to mention two because I'm old school and I'm very much in favor of starting with teachers with what they've got and every teacher has PowerPoints. We're PowerPoint soaked. We've got, we're like sponges and we've soaked up all the millions of PowerPoints in the world and uh, so staff and kids, teaching kids have got hundreds of PowerPoints and it's a real pity to throw those away. Um, so I'm going to mention two apps here, just so that, uh, and I'll put the URLs into chat when I finish talking and hand it over. Um, I'm going to mention two here. This one is called Slide Shark, and this one is called Electric Slide. I'll put the URLs in the chat, so if you didn't, if you can't see them because it's low resolution, or uh, um, you, you, my accent's a bit weird, then I'll put them in chat. 
um, slide shark and and electric slide both work the same way you go to a website you go to their website and you upload your PowerPoints on their website and then oh great Shingo thanks for that and then what happens is they become available in t in these apps and so you can present them in the apps um, let me look at uh, electric slide let me just touch that okay so here's electric slide ah oh, that's very interesting it's interfering with my with my it's not displaying properly on my uh, MacBook Pro and I think I know why because what electric slide wants so I think you may not be seeing anything is your screen just clear now can you see my iPad I don't think so is that right it's just you can only see the promo for electric slide yeah I thought so I think uh, this doesn't surprise me I'll, I'll tell you why because when you use electric slide to show your presentations what you see on your iPad is you see the slide you see notes you see other aspects uh, uh, um, of it you see you can even set up a clock if you like but then when it's displaying like if you connected it to a projector it displays only uh, the slide itself so you see all the information on your iPad but on the slide it's going to uh, um, it only shows the actual PowerPoint slide now electric slide is my preferred one of these two because electric slide also has this option where you can project over the Wi-Fi I think actually over the internet again to people's iPads so I could do a presentation here and if you went to www.electricslide.net slash shambles guru you would see my presentation I'm not even going to demonstrate it now because this is too long um, I'm just raising awareness that if you had teachers who were maybe reluctant teachers and had lots of PowerPoints electric slide is really will be a really good motivator for them to get in because it's using all those hundreds of hours they've spent preparing the slides um, and it also has functionality that it works lovely over any mobile device BYOD Shingo I'm going to stop there okay great um, I love it that that has a really good potential in terms of um, using the with the school with the BYO device, which I think we might be heading to next year or year after. Um, I'm just going to quickly hand over to AJ if you have any similar thing for Android. And I'm not quite sure if you can actually do any app share on yours, but um, if you could just um, put any suggestions so that way, that way, if anyone's got the Android app, um, we can um, have a look or they can have a look. Thanks, Shingo. Um, when you asked me to present um, earlier this week, I had to go and do a bit of an investigation because honestly, the tablet, the Android tablet that I've had previous to this, uh, Shingo, can I get you to turn off your mic, please? No, I'm not sure. It's actually um, Sorry, tablet. shambles. Thank you. Sorry. Um, I had to go and check it out because the tablet that I've had before this was an Acer Iconia and I, it was recommended and I, I do like it. I, it's, it's not that I'm, I'm disappointed with it but I found it difficult to convert my way of working as a teacher to this tablet. Now I know lots of teachers like the iPad and for various reasons I didn't buy an Apple tablet. I, I specifically wanted an Android tablet but I was just having trouble getting the Acer Iconia to work and I think most of it came down to not the technology but the way that I work and the way that I think. So the other week I ran into um, somebody demonstrating the Samsung Galaxy Note and I, I'm hesitant to um, promote a particular device because I, you know we have to pick the right device for us but I am going to promote so I'm just trying to paste, there we go. Can everyone see that image that I've just pasted in? No. Oh. No, sorry. 
Okay. All right. Great. <laughs> Just um, posted right. the URL to the store. Okay. Sorry, I'm trying to work and, and talk at the same time. Uh, presentation tools in terms of what we oh, can yes, do. Um, I know that you guys love the um, explain everything. Samsung in their Galaxy Note device have its own app called S Note. And in the S Note app, it can pretty much do everything that you were demonstrating in the explain everything. Um, I was really hoping you could see the image that I've put onto the screen, but obviously not. Is that so the mind time. map? We can see the mind map. You can see the mind map? Excellent. Okay, so the mind map is something that I created while I was using that app. Um, it has lots of other potential. I can input photographs, I can input sound, I can... Um, there's all sorts of things just like yours and also that recordability. So for students to create things on the run. But the part of the technology that I love the most is that I can create quality handwritten type um, elements and I really needed the pen uh, capabilities. And the stylus on the other tablets just weren't doing what I needed it to do. So um, it's really the pen that's been the game changer and that has allowed me to actually use it the way I need to, which is mobile, being able to think on the run and then being able to share this. So at the beginning of the session, I shared this image. I actually completed it about two minutes ago. I shared this image to my Dropbox and I've just copied it straight out of my file and put it into the slide here now. And that's what the mobile technology and the apps should be doing, allowing us to do, that we can connect anywhere, we can connect quickly and we can connect to multiple people in, in a variety of ways. Um, I've sort of given you an overview rather than just keeping it to the presenta presenting um, so we can flick back to that slide when you talk about, about some of the other things. Um, Note Ledge. Note Ledge does the same thing as the Samsung S Note but I didn't find it quite as intuitive to use and I haven't played around with Magisto as yet. And if there are other ones for Android, I'm more than happy to hear about them as well. Okay, great, AJ. Um, if you could um, just put the, um, the, the the Google Play, I think, is the store name, and um, links to the, um, for those who use the Android device can actually access and just give it a try because it's, it's all about um, trying first hand rather than um, being told this this will work. Um, so this session is all, it's all about kind of throwing ideas and see if you can pick anything up that say, oh, that looks interesting, so we might try that one. So it's not about um, us trying to sell you things um, or force you to use our ideas. Um, now, I'm a bit of conscious of time, so I'm just going to move on to the next one, which is, is a game show like activity apps. Um, now in terms of game show like activity apps, I'm trying to kind of I was trying to find something that um, can engage the students in a classroom, especially for revision or especially for any activity that involves some um, students showing off their knowledge and skills. So the one I found is called this particular one, and I'm just going to show you very quickly what it can do. It's very straightforward and very simple to use. And this one is, um, as you can see, there's a, a four or six die. And you also have uh, the team sheet. Now, with this team sheet, what you can do is you can add players. So, for example, uh, hang on. So I can change the person's name, so for example, let's say John, and let's say Matt, and 
Sarah and so on and so forth. And what you can do with these Um, what you can do with these is basically you can give scores. So whether it's plus one or plus ten, or you can take, and it just gives a score of what um, each player is doing. And it is called, um, what do you call a game tool or game board tool? I've just posted the URL for the actual site. And with these, the roll of dice, it's kind of like a, a Yahtzee thing. And you can uh, do the, the timer, and you can have this little buzz thing that uh, the buzzes, and you can also have the, the game time the ticking. So it's just a, something that you can bring into the classroom, just a bit of a fun thing to do. And I have used it with my year 12, and they actually quite liked it because it's very simple and it's visually quite attractive with a wooden um, floorboard and a little pencil. And it seems to be um, a bit of a hit with my senior class, and so hopefully it'll work with some of the junior classes. Um, now, if the shambles, do you have any others that you might recommend? Well, this is a really interesting one because let me share my desktop again. Because it's an area I don't really have anything on, except I do have um, uh, an area which I, a folder which I've called Picker. And actually, board game tools looks good. I haven't used that at all. Um, but Picker, I've got a folder here called Picker. And if we open that, um, some of these are, if I'm working with groups, and you have to choose, and it doesn't matter whether it's a group of, of three people or it's a, a group of 30. It depends which of these I would use. So this is where you could like pick a name out of a hat. And um, like there's one here called, and I'll put the URLs in later, uh, decide now. And if I open up decide now, oh, it turned it sideways. That's interesting. It's like a spin the wheel. And all of these names around the side can be anything. They could be students' names, or they could even be topics. What topic are we going to do today? Or um, um, what prize are you going to get? And when you touch the middle, and I suspect the internet lag will mean this is a bit of, uh, it just goes weird for you. Um, you can see it just chooses by touching. So let me uh, say goodbye to that. Um, the other one I want to mention is, very quickly, is one called Selector. And with that one, you just, uh, I really don't think you're gonna, this is gonna work. You put, you put two people or three people or four people put their fingers on and it whizzes around. And I suspect your screens are just a mess when that did that. And so it chooses which person, it stops on somebody's finger. And the last one, the quickie here, is this is the closest one this is the closest one to being a game show because this one, I've had this for a while, but I've never actually used it in, in sort of in the wild. Um, it enables you to identify. Um, <laughs> I hope you can't hear this music. It enables you to identify. It's like a game show. You have, you have students there, but also. No, no, I'm going to stop that. It can drive you crazy. <laughs> it drive you crazy. But what you can do is you can choose prizes and you can choose names and I think you can even choose questions to ask. I can't remember about that. So it is more interactive and more, uh, you know, you can customize it to your own particular situation. So if you're working with a group of kids, um, you could have prizes for getting certain things right and the prizes could be cho are chosen at random within the app itself. Um, again, I have the, the URL of the app, and I'll throw that into chat. Um, the music can be a bit crazy, but we all have mute buttons, right? Okay, that's me for that part. Okay, thank you, Shannon. Um Well, from what um, Jess and AJ say, there doesn't seem to be any particular app for Android that is 
kind of a, a game show like. Um, but for those who use um, the, the normal laptop, there is a great one which is actually called Lantrip Tico, and I think it's oh sorry, which I believe is a UK um, um, version or it's made made by people in the UK, and it's a like a um, Java-based program which you can download onto your computer, and it has a like a, a collection of different game shows like um, tools. So it's got things like um, uh, like the timer um, and also the quiz maker, and also has um, uh, like I don't know what, what exactly what it does, but and it does great things with your classroom to engage and especially if you if your classroom has um interactive whiteboard it's a great way to um get students to be engaged in class so that's the one thing uh, if you have time today we'll get through and next one i like to go on which is a classroom or student management tools or apps and i looked at a few others and um the one that I think is a really good in terms of the record managing is this thing called um, iDocio. And now uh, the trip taker is only for desktop. It's not for any um, tablet device. So I didn't actually include it, but for those who are interested, um, you can have a look and um, play around it with you and on your own your own time and you'll probably have a blast of time just creating bits and pieces because it's very simple to use. And this one's called on iDocio and Shambles, if you don't mind just um, searching for the App Store and put the URL, that'd be great. And so basically what it does is you can create um, your class. So for example, if I click on, uh, let's say what I have tomorrow, now what it does is you can um, keep all the record of all the atten attendance. So it's fairly simple to use. Um, it takes a bit to set up, set everything up. But once you have everything um, there, it's extremely useful and it's very easy to use as well. And you can have a multiple tabs on the right hand side. So as you can see, the green ones I have um, is for attendance and I use the red one for assessment, and the yellow one I use for behavior, and the blue one for notes. And you can also link it with your calendar, which I haven't actually done. Um, but that's a great tool that you can use because I'll just show you how this uh, works briefly with one of the classes. I might actually use this staff meeting so that way I'm not exposing any student information. And so you add when you click here, you can come up with a quick attendance role. And what it does is, uh, it doesn't seem to be allowing me to create. Uh, here we go. So I can change it to attend all, but on the way to what I need to just do a quick here we go. So it came up with um just a tick or cross or I believe this one is for being late. So you can just click and you can just finish. And you can also create a different type of editor. For example if you want um numeric pads, text, text with icons or just icons or color without text. Uh, so I'll just show you the counter. This one is the one I use for, for example, if students um, forget to bring a uh, certain material to class, all I do is just double click on it and it just keeps going negative and doesn't go up positive for some reason. But And the other one you can use is Uh, you can also do yes or no. Uh, you can also do calculation. You can also do the grading. So, for example, 
with a great type, you can have all these from 0 to 10, 0 to 100, 0 to 20, uh, or A to F. And so you can uh, choose whatever you um, need. And once you decide it, it just comes up with the, the selector. So you can just choose whichever grade the student deserves and so on and so forth. And also, this is a, another feature I love about the iDocio. You can attach any documents. So for example, if, um, if I take, um, for example, students' work, and um, if it's, um, for, for example, if, if it's art teacher, and you can't exactly um, keep everything, so in that case, you can take a photo. Or when I do, um, the oral assessment, and I might record the audio, or add some photos, or add the URL, and you can also include the email, parents' email, mother's name, father's name, date of birth, address, phone number, you can put annotation, and you can see the attendance straight away, so it will be good for things like parent-teacher interview night. It also shows a summary, which I don't have anything for the moment. And you can also email either to students or to parents or to both. So that's a, that's a great way to con keep in touch with the parents' side. I'm just going to stop sharing. And I might actually ask um, AJ and Jess if they have any, any ideas or what they use for the Android device. So I'll start with AJ. I was interested to notice that Jess was saying she uses the Teacher Aid Pro and that it works pretty much the same except that it's not quite as visually pleasing. I think Apple always do the visual side of their apps better than what Android offers. I would probably use my Evernote um, program linked to my tablet to do pretty much all of those so I would set um, a table up using my computer and then I would access it using my tablet or my phone to take attendance and to make notes and to I've set up notebook file systems for the students for student observations and um, formative assessment type uh, comments that I want to take for students. Um, the other thing, there is an app called Android Attendance. Man, let me see if I can pop that in there. Android attendance. And when you set up the names of your students in a spreadsheet, then you sync it across to the Android app, attendance app, and it sits there. Um, and then every time you take the attendance for that student or for that class or that period, it adds it to the spreadsheet that is collate, collated in a Google doc spreadsheet. So um, it crunches your data a bit better. But again, not particularly visually pleasing. So just for straight attendance, the Android attendance. But if there's other comments and things that I want to make, especially in terms of formative assessment and collecting evidence of students' work, then I definitely use Evernote. Oh, and the other last one that I would use on my tablet and phone, and it doesn't quite, it's not exactly attendance, um, but is um, Class Dojo. So I've been on Class Dojo since uh, it sort of came out and was released. And I love the idea that I can have the attendance page up on the whiteboard for the students, and then I can be walking around the classroom helping students, um, and I can observe a student anywhere in the room and just surreptitiously tap a button on my phone and it comes up for the students to immediately see the feedback that they're on task or that they need to get back to task. Yeah, um, it is better for the primary school level kids. I haven't played with it with the high school level kids yet. Um, but with the right class, it might it might do the job. I, I just haven't needed it yet. Okay, great. Uh, now, Shambhu, are you actually sharing anything? Because I'm not quite sure if I um, accidentally tapped anything. 
Uh, yeah, I'd like to share. I'd like to share a, a couple here. Let me just uh, share my screen. Okay, while he's uh, get, getting that on the screen, um, I noticed like a few people who use an um, iDocio in the classroom. Um, for those who have been using it for a while, are there any um, ways that you have been using that you found it um, very useful and not very not in the conventional way? If I could just get your get you to put your hand up if you have used iDocio in a more advanced manner. No, be too shy. <laughs> <laughs> and Jess uh, suggested before that she uses something else. Uh, or sorry, JD, if you um, use the iDocio for any other um, way that is not just uh, taking attendance or just keeping record, um, if you'd like to share. Or you can just put it in the chat box. Okay. Uh, well, I'll just um, hand it over to um, Shambles and I'll go back to um, Jess as to what she was um, using. Hang on. Sorry, someone has we got uh, oh, somebody got the hand up. Do you uh, want to take that first? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I'll just hand over to Jess. Hi, everyone. Um, yeah, I use uh, TeacherAid Pro. I've been using it all year, and I just find it really useful because you can do pretty much all the stuff that you want to, um, all the information you want to stuff uh, and stuff that you want to store in your tablet. It's just in one app. So um, I start off my lessons by marking my role on there. I've got all of their photos um, on their role so that I could I could learn all of their names at the start of the year. Um, I send a note home to get all of their parents' um, contact details and pop that into the app. And um, you store all of their attendance records, um, uh, results and assessments, and there's even a log where you can track behaviour, good and bad. And then by just clicking one button, you can send um, all of those records to each parent, like just for their child, obviously. You can also send out um, mass messages to all the parents at once very easily. Um, I just found it really effective for communication as well and storing everything because I don't really like um, jumping across apps for everything. It's really handy that it's all in the one app. So that was um, the main reason I used it. I think it cost about $10 for the full version and uh, it's always been um, updated. I've, I've been constant contact by email with the maker of it and it's been like whenever you suggest an improvement, you'll take it on board and put it in the next update. So it's really good. Uh, so it's Teacher Aid Pro if anyone's interested. Great, thanks, um, Jess. Uh, Michelle, we've got about a couple of minutes to just quickly run us through the one you have. Okay, and I'm I'm doing actually I'm going to do what you suggested at the beginning. We raise awareness in these sessions, and we don't spend time going into them in detail. I have to mention Edmodo simply because my head's full of Edmodo because yesterday uh, Edmodo had their annual one day online conference and if you're an Edmodo school and you miss that it's not the end of the world because they actually recorded all the pro all the sessions uh, and it probably started about one o'clock in the morning Sydney time so, but you'd have caught the ones at the end today. Um, and Edmodo is very good. They released a new uh, app for uh, the iPad, and uh, they uh, they're working on that for Android. Edmodo. Um, they their iPad app is fairly new, uh, and I was really impressed. There were 25,000 people signed up for that conference. There was about must have been about 30 in the room in, in physically where, when, where they held it, but there was 25,000 people signed up. And uh, yeah, uh, thanks for that. Uh, Edmodo does work well there. So that's an, I just wanted to raise awareness, and I put a URL to an Edmodo area on Shambles, which has uh, lots of details there. Um, it opened my eyes a bit yesterday on what Edmodo can do, because all the present presenters talked about real classroom. They didn't talk about Edmodo. They talked about use 
in teaching and learning and what they're trying to achieve. Now I want to mention uh, a second uh, one which is, uh, have I got it here? There's one here called Three Rings, which I suspect you may not have heard of. Oh, it's turned it round because it's an iPad, it's an iPhone app. Now, has, it, has anybody used Three Rings before? Already three rings. Any anybody, or is it completely new? Uh, three rings. The concept is so simple. Um, it's uh, and it works. I think it works better on the iPhone than it does on the iPad. Here, now, I'm not going to go through it. But basically, what you do is you set up classes, and you put students in the classes. You set up um, you set up some keywords, and I actually set one up here I think I set up a class called teacher professional development and you can see the people there that I've got I've got Anne Frank and Fred Jones and George Smith and I set up tags and those tags are outcomes I would expect in a lesson like if I'm assessing it I want to assess things like critical thinking cultural understanding leadership media literacy and along the bottom here what you can do is you can wander around the class or wander around the kids and if you see any see them doing anything which you think is will be something to remember or useful uh, outcome for assessment you can do things like take a little video take a still shot you can make a note you can even make an audio i think if i touch the audio a microphone comes up so what you do is you build a profile from on your iphone as you walk around the class and walk around the different groups um, and some may even say that you're actually building an e-portfolio for each of those kids. Um, it doesn't. It's not a pretty looking uh, app. It's very, very basic. I think one worth looking at. I've not tried it yet. I think the next one day inset I do with a group of teachers, I may well use this during the day to take it. And then at the end of the day, we'll have a summary. I can use it and show actual work and things that happened to illustrate uh, success on these criteria. Okay, Shingu, Shingu, that's uh, that's it on that one. Okay, thank you. Um, now we have about five or so minutes. To just go through the last section, which is just the and um, well, some some of these are apps that that I use, which can be connected with um, majority of the the cloud storage. Um, so, like I said before, explain everything that covers um, a large range of um, the cloud storage starting with the Dropbox, Box.com, um, Google Drive um, so that the, I guess the possibility is is endless in terms of this storing everything and also you can access anywhere and with the good thing with explain everything is that um, if I record something I can just save it straight into box.com or Dropbox that is that is synced with other teachers or all with my students so it's very easy way and the next one which is a quick office is quick office is pretty much like a uh, the Microsoft office is quite expensive I think it's about uh, twenty dollars a link could be and but it has the the word word processor as well as the uh, the PowerPoint and Excel, and you can open any Microsoft um, Office um, files, and it does work quite well. They it was quite buggy at some stage last year, but they seem to um, sort it things out. So it doesn't quit unexpectedly, and you can um, sync it with um, any cloud storage. Oh, we came free. Well, not within a couple of months. And the good good reader is something that if if you do lots of um and uh, reading or marking, it's a great um, app to keep in your iPad because you can open it up, um and you can open up um, PDF files, you can annotate it, um and you can open up photos, and you can open up pretty much any documents, and it just stays there. And you can also connect it with your local network. So if you are connected to your home network drive, you can um, log in as well. Um, I don't know if you have heard of the the things called Hoxai. It's a 
it's a similar to Audacity and it allows you to do just the basic audio recording. Uh, this one's free. And explain everything is uh, quite costly. I don't know, it's about five dollars. And um, Quick Office is quite expensive as well. The Good Reader is about three dollars. Um, Hoxite is a free version. And Audio Note is um, it's pretty much like the lecture note where you can um, annotate. Not sorry, not not, not annotate. You can um, start recording something, and as you type, it keeps track of what you're actually writing at the time you um, something is happening. So, for example, um, if you're going to the PD session or any conference, and you have 45 minutes of conference that you've recorded and throughout the conference you might take notes and what you can do is as you play back you can um, click on the certain words and it actually jumps to that particular section where when the recording was happening so it's, it's a great way for you to do um, just the taking notes in a conference or in the in your lectures and um, that's something I, I, I guess you can suggest to your students. Now, it's I think it's cost about four dollars for paid version. The free version is limited to five minutes of recording, so it's not very useful. But you can record it, and you can play back the recorded material. So, for example, if you record a 45-minute lecture, and if someone else downloads free version. That person can up, um, open up your recording that goes for 45 minutes. So it's a quite a useful way. Okay, now um, we've got a couple of minutes. Now, are there any apps that you would like to just contribute in any of these space? Um, because these are the ones that are, I kind of came quickly to my mind in terms of. Um, things that are able to be synced with the cloud storage. So you can type it in the chat box, so you can um, draw anywhere here. Shingo, can I mention something? So, sure. really, really short. Um, I, in, in chat, I've already put a new knowledge these anyway, is that Evernote and Dropbox, for me, without any shadow of a doubt, are in my top five, uh, they're not apps, are they? They're just, they're more than apps for for every teacher. No doubt about that. Um, but I'm not going to go into that. There's lots of information on the web already about it. Um, SkyDrive, if you're using Microsoft, SkyDrive is good. Um, because SkyDrive is built into the new Microsoft Office 365, which you can't install on your machines, because Microsoft Office 365 only works on the web. And also, Microsoft have just been taken to court and been told that they have to change the name. So although it's called SkyDrive, you're going to find out that they'll have to change it soon. Do a Google, you'll find out details of, about that. The, the big one for cloud storage I'd add here for photographs, but it's personal for me, uh, will be Flickr. I don't know what guy. Maybe type into chat, guys, girls, what you use for, particularly for uh, photo storage in the cloud. But I love Flickr. I really do. I love being able to take a URL out of Flickr and just say to people, without a password, send your photographs to this URL, and they all appear, and all the children's photographs appear on on my on my Flickr uh, stream. I, I love things like that. Um, so the, I think they're the only things in that time that I'd, uh, um, Shingo, I'd add, I'd add to those. And, uh, actually, the other thing you can use uh, with Edmodo is that you can um, link your Google Drive. So for those who have Google Drive, you can link it so that it, um, to provide the resource for your students. And also with the Schoology, um, you can link it with your Dropbox. So it, uh, that's another thing you can um, um, link with. Okay, now we'll come to the end of the session. Um, now next week is, um, we haven't actually decided exactly how we're going to be doing this, but um, 
uh, the session, uh, part of the session will be taken by um, Jess, who was here before, um, on blogging and how she uses blogging with her classroom and how it's benefited her. So if you'd like to um, set up your own blogging or if you have um, blogging in your classroom, then um, please come and share with us. Okay, um, I'm just going to stop the recording and thank you very much for listening for those who are listening to the recording.